Hello, my name's Stuart Herbert and this is one of a series of videos I'm recording sharing how I've set up Sublime Text 2 for doing PHP development. And in this video I'm going to demo the CTAGS module, which is a module I use for navigating around source code, especially source code that I don't know very well, or source code I've just forgotten because it's been a couple of months since I last worked on it. Now if we start by going to the website for community packages for Sublime Text and we type in CTAGS, we'll see there's one module for CTAGS support for Sublime Text 2. Now it's important you go to the modules website, which is hosted on GitHub, and read the installation instructions. The CTAGS plugin relies on the CTAX command line program, as the CTAX mechanism itself has been around for many, many years. And you need to make sure you have this software installed and working on your computer. The plugin can't install it for you, and it doesn't work without this command line software installed and working. So you need to go and read these setup instructions and get it working very important. And then once it is working, what you can do is very very simple and very very powerful. First of all you need to create a CTAX file or a tags file as they're more commonly called. Now a tags file is just an index of your source code. What classes, what uh, methods and where they're declared and to do that you open up a file in a tab in Sublime Text 2 and inside that file you hit Control T, Control R. And you'll see in the status bar at the bottom it says building C tags please be patient. Now don't be fooled by that message disappearing it takes a bit longer than that. What you've got to do is wait for a message saying that it's finished rebuilding the file like that. And you can see there that what it's done is the plugin has created a tags file. Where's it gone? Here. So what it does is it takes the top folder on the left hand side, these are called mount points in Sublime Text 2 speak, and puts the tag file underneath that. So this file here called fix is open inside this mount point and therefore the tags file gets created here, like that. That's how it works. And then once you've built the tags file, you can then take full advantage of it. And I mentioned earlier, I use it for software archaeology. Finding my way around code I don't know, or code I've forgotten about. And I'm going to show you an example of how, how, how that works and how quick it can be. So this is fix, a command line tool I wrote. Imagine you were trying to take it apart to understand how it works. Imagine you're trying to fix a bug in it. So you, chances are you'd start with the fix command itself, which is what we've got open here. And let's just show that in the sidebar so you can see where that is. There we go. That's revealed there. And if you scroll down this file, you see it's a lot of setup work. And it creates a class and calls the main method. So I'd like to go to that class. Now I could use the go to anything pane and search for it um, which is very handy or I could go clicking around on the left hand side or with C tags I can just hit control T control T bang there I am I'm in the file I need ready to have a scroll around so I'm going through the main method which we know gets called and we see it creates first thing it does is create something called a context oh what's that let's have a look control T control T bang I'm there just like that two key presses it's even faster than the go to anything pane in sublime text 2 and the go to anything pane is quite special and we can scroll down here and we can see there's more classes here I want to go to the commands list I don't know what that is but very interested in that control T control T bang I'm there just like that so for bombing around your code finding 
finding classes, finding methods, very, very handy. Very handy indeed. And uh, we can pick another method. Let's have a look. What we got here. So we see something here being called called style, a method. But where is that? Hit Control T twice. And bang, we've gone to the method. It's inside the console display class. And of course, dollar so is dollar this standard out, which is a standard out class, which uh, which extends the console display class. But it's gone there to the right place for us because it's just indexed the code. It's fantastic for that. Very very good, very handy. But it does take a bit of work and a couple of compromises to get this plugin working this well. And I want to take you through those. The first thing I want to do, let me just close these tabs down, get them out of the way. If we go to the plugins default settings, which is this file here, let me show that in the sidebar. Here we go. So this is my Sublime Text 2 config folder, and if I hover the mouse over the tab, the path should come up. Hopefully you can see that there. So this is the plugin's own default settings file. And all it does is do a recursive search on a folder and write the output to a .tags file. And then the folder is just tacked on as a command line parameter at the end, which is fantastic, except for one thing. C tags doesn't understand the structure of your code, doesn't understand the strategy of it, it only understands the syntax. So if you've got code that uses vendor folders, which is something that's becoming more popular in the PHP community as we learn to sandbox our code and rely less on third party code, then you can end up with a lot of duplicates. And I've had to create an overrides settings file for that. So if I scroll all the way down here, in my user folder, I've created an override file here where I'm excluding anything from the vendor folder and I'm excluding anything from hidden folders as well because I've got some sometimes copies of code ends up in there for the way fix builds pair packages something I won't bore you the details with but I need to exclude both of those now what happens if I don't so let me just rename this file so that it no longer works there we go so this settings no longer in play okay go back to fix now, Control T, Control R, kick off another rebuild. Got to wait for this to run, and this takes a bit longer because now it's going through the vendor folders that were hidden before. Still going, still going, still going. You see, it's it's slower. It's not as immediate as it was before. And a Sublime Text Two is all about speed. This is not exactly fantastic. It's not Sublime Text 2's fault, it's just how there's a lot of code for C tags to index. And it's still indexing, and it's still indexing, but it'll get there in a moment. Now, when it's finished indexing, what we're going to do is we're going to go and find the autoloader. Right, it's just finished indexing. We're going to find the autoloader that I'm using. Now, if you're familiar with vendor folders, it won't be a surprise to find that every vendor folder I've got for all my projects has a copy of the autoloader installed. That's exactly how it should be. But it has an interesting property here. If I hit Control T twice, I now get a list of all the different copies of the autoloader. Here we go. Now, for the fixed project itself, this one here at the bottom is the vent is where it's installed for the vendor folder for that. But the original code is here, second option down. Now, as you can see, the, the symbols pane is quite narrow. And you do end up with some of these paths sometimes being truncated, which can be a problem for understanding which one to go to. 
So that's why I have that overrides, overrides file into it. Ignore the vendor folder, ignore the .build folder. Has the down important downside that my vendor folders don't get indexed, so I don't know what's inside them. That's a compromise I've chosen to make um, because the vendor folders tend to contain code that I ever know or code I go and read the API for online. But it's your choice, and there's a lot of configuration to do and to play with for you to decide what works. But another way around that would be if I scroll up here you'll see that what I've got open is a folder with all my projects in. If I had each project as a separate folder here and just ctag that folder then that would work quite well because it would ctag the folder and its vendors and nothing else. So you wouldn't be able to jump between modules but inside that module in its own little sandbox you'd get what you want and that's a compromise well worth exploring as well as that might work for you and it's entirely up to you what you do but the CTAX plugin is very powerful and is one I hope I've convinced you to go away and play with thank you for watching <laughs>